been a while since I've done this blindfolded. Blindfold speed bag. It's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. Welcome to the EFL gym. EFL, if you don't know, stands for Extreme Fight Laboratory, because we're extreme scientists at this laboratory that maybe you've noticed when I record videos over here. We've got these four tenets of martial arts up here, and they're in Chinese. Why? Because this is China. I'm in Shanghai, China. And we have tenets of martial arts written up here in a language that the students can understand. And I think that's a pretty good idea. I know a lot of traditional martial arts schools in non-Chinese speaking countries have Chinese calligraphy up in their dojo because it looks cool and it does. It's aesthetically pleasing. But I think it is important if you have a message that you want to convey that you want people to readily understand, write it in a language that you're going to understand, that a child could understand. They can walk in and be reminded these are the values in this dojo. We always talk about respect in the martial arts, don't we? Like, bow to your sensei, show respect. Respect is something a whole lot deeper than a superficial acknowledgement like bowing. We cannot have respect unless we first have courage. Yeah. Respect is not kowtowing to an authority just because respect is not being some little wimp who just bows down and is like, oh, whatever you say, master, whatever you say, because you're the boss. That's not respect. That's cowardice. We cannot have respect without courage unless we are brave of heart, of mind, of body, of soul. Otherwise, what is it? Respect is a two-way street. We have to show it to receive it. Courage or bravery right here. That's what that means. Courage. We must first have courage to step foot in the door. People often say, what's the hardest belt to get in jujitsu or karate or taekwondo or whatever? The white belt. Yeah. It takes tremendous courage to get out of your comfort zone, to go to a gym where you don't know what to expect, where who knows what's going to happen. They might hurt you. Everybody's going to be better than you. You're going to suck for a long time. That takes courage. The very act of fighting or sparring or that takes courage. Getting out of bed in the morning when you're nice and comfortable and you don't really have to. Oh, it's a recreational activity. That takes a different type of courage. This one has a funky translation, but I'm going to translate it as helping other people. Mutual aid is probably the literal translation, but helping other people. So first we have courage which leads to respect, which leads to gaining some abilities in the martial arts, which leads to a capacity to do something in this world to affect a change. It can be a small change, helping other people in their path in the dojo, helping other people out there in the world, helping yourself so that you might help other people. Remember in the, when you're flying a plane, for example, in the event of an emergency, put on your own oxygen mask first before helping the people next to you, because you won't be of much help if you're dead. And finally, the last one of all, humility. One of the most abused terms in martial arts schools. I think out of all people, Martial artists tend to be the most proud, unhumble people I have ever met in my life. And yet we talk about humility all the time. We must learn humility. We must show humility. Humility is not putting on a costume and bowing to your sensei and saying the right words and doing the, the right motions. It's not that. Humility is, is a willingness to change and it's a willingness to learn 
And it's a willingness to look outside of yourself for the answers. It's a lot of things, but it's also a lot of things that martial artists who talk about humility, who rave about humility, who write humility up on their wall in Asian characters, in Asian languages like that, will yap about constantly and be anything but. So let's not be that way. So once again, if we have no courage, we have no humility. Humility takes great courage, tremendous courage. But how? Let me explain that a little bit. Look, if you're wrong about something, say you messed up. You messed up bad. You screwed up. And you, the right course of action, the courageous course of action would be to set the record straight, to tell everybody, to tell the people involved, hey, I messed up, and to make it right. That takes great courage to be humble. to say, I was wrong. Now, let me try to fix it. Let me make it up to you. That takes great courage. And it takes respect. See, these, these things aren't just a bunch of fun, random ideas that are thrown up on the wall because they sounded nice. I mean, this is some, this is some ancient Chinese tradition right here. And I think those ancients knew a few things about the way people interact with each other. Once again, we must be courageous in order to be respectful, to show respect, to receive respect, real respect that matters. Not fear of others, but respect from others. People get those confused. We must be courageous. We must have respect show respect in order to receive respect, in order to help other people. We must have the capacity to do something positive in the world, to affect positive change, to help others, to lift up the hands that hang low in order to be humble. All three are integrally linked together. If you don't have one, you don't have the others. So those are the tenets of martial arts up on the wall here at the EFL gym. You get them all in frame right there. I got three. I got four inside of my head. That's it. What do you have hanging up in your dojo? And can you read it? If not, you might want to fix that. Thanks for watching. Now get out there and train.